Hello and welcome to the Isabellenhütte online video tutorial about how to configure our IVTS current and voltage sensing module with Busmaster. This video tutorial contains six chapters. Getting started, parts and wiring, setting up Busmaster, configuring result messages, configuring CAN IDs, configuring the CAN baud rate and configuring overcurrent thresholds. In this chapter, we want to talk about how to configure IVTS overcurrent thresholds. For this, we will need the IVTS datasheet version 1.01. The datasheet can be obtained at our website isabelnhutteusa.com or from the websites of one of our partners. IVTS is equipped with overcurrent sensing functionality that is programmable on the positive and on the negative side of the sensing range. In this tutorial, we want to set the positive overcurrent threshold to 1100 amp and the positive reset threshold to 900 amps. When IVTS will exceed 1100 amp on the positive side, like shown in this graph, it will set the overcurrent bit in the result message. And once it goes below the reset threshold, as shown on the right side of this graph, it will reset the overcurrent bit in the current result message. To configure this, we will have to send two command messages. First, we will send a command stop message. The device will respond with a response stop message. Then we will send the command set threshold positive message and the device will respond with a response threshold positive message. Programming thresholds on the negative end of the measurement range works in almost the same way except that for the command set threshold positive message the command set threshold negative message will have to be sent. Now we will look at how to put together the command stop message, the first message that we will have to send. This can be followed by looking at the IBTS datasheet page 25. And we will look at the section command set mode. The command set mode basically defines whether the module is in stop mode or in run mode. And it has two different settings, the actual mode which is valid until the next reset in data byte one, and the startup operation mode, which requires a store command to um, save the setting, and which is valid after each startup. Now to set the module in stop mode, we will have to choose data byte 0x34 for the set mode message, and in data byte one, we will choose 0x00 for the actual mode stop to set the module in stop mode. Optionally, we can also set the data byte 2, which is by default configured to 01 run, as if we want to configure the startup behavior after the next startup, but this is not mandatory. Data byte 3 and 4 are for future access and don't have to be used so we just can we can just leave them as they are at zero. Now we will configure the command set threshold message. This can be found in the IVTS datasheet on page 25 and 26. We are in the section command set threshold positive. First we will have to set the data byte 0 to 0x35 zero for the set overcurrent thresholds positive current direction. Then we will have to set the data bytes 1 and 2, which represent the overcurrent set threshold in 1 amp steps. 0 means off. So that means that the positive overcurrent threshold of 1100 amps in hexadecimal has to be 0x044c. We are in big engine mode here, which is the default setting of IVTS. 
so that means it stores the most significant byte of a word at the lower memory address. Then we will have to set the data bytes 3 and 4. Those represent the overcurrent reset threshold in 1 amp steps. The positive overcurrent reset threshold of 900 amps equals 0x0384 in hexadecimal. You may have noticed that you can even set the positive overcurrent threshold on the negative side of the range. Important here is the order of the set and the reset threshold. For the positive overcurrent threshold to work, the positive overcurrent threshold has to be larger in value than the reset threshold. For the negative overcurrent threshold programming, it has to be just the other way around. So now we're back in Busmaster to actually go through how to put the messages that we just designed into the program and how to send them out to the module and actually get the module to respond to our messages. Now for this, we're going to switch back from the Tools tab to the Can tab. The um, windows that you will need are the message window right here. Um, which shows you the messages that have been sent to the module and received from the module and the transmission messages window right here. This is actually the window that we're going to use to put the messages into the system. Now the transmission window can be pulled up by simply clicking this button right here. And um, when I click there, you can see it's already there, so nothing happens. And the message window can be pulled up by clicking this button here. Um, the first line here, the activate button, has to have a check mark, and then you will see it. Also, just an additional hint under the views tab right here, you have the option to actually arrange windows by cascading them, tile vertically, tile horizontally. So I tiled them vertically, um, that's just the view I like best. Um, just a little hint if you're not happy with how the windows show up here on your screen. So now we go back to the CAN tab. And we will start off in the configure transmission messages window right here. Um, this window has three boxes, the transmitted messages frame list, the data byte view, and the signal details. Now the first thing we have to do to add a message is to double click on this field where it says add message. By doing so, you will see that a drop down menu comes up with all different categories of messages and we will always select the first one, the message command, because all the other ones that we see down here are actually messages that are sent by the module and not relevant for configuring IVTS. And we see all these messages here because we uploaded our CAN DBC file before into Busmaster. Now we select the first message and by doing so you can see that all command messages populate down here under signal details. So the first thing we're going to do is to put in the stop message and um, you can see down here under signal details, there's a list of all the command messages and you can select one of them. I'm gonna select the actual mode message right here because that's the one that we're gonna need for the stop message. And as you can see in the signal name, the first two digits here are always the data byte zero. So that can be of a little help when you put the message in the data byte view up here. Also on the right hand side, there's a matrix and this matrix basically has the data bytes on the Y axis, like so, zero, one, two, three, and so on. And the actual bits of each data byte on the X axis right here from zero to seven. So basically, um, the data byte one bit zero is highlighted. So that means that this message will actually only accept um, the um, data byte one, the first bit to be changed. 
and um, you can technically also type this in as the raw value right here so um, as we're gonna have the module in stop mode the value that we actually need here is zero but um, if you would type a five in here for instance it would switch to one because one is the only allowed value in there so and it will also populate up here the data byte view under the data byte zero one for one but that would be the run mode now so um, this helps a little bit with regards to the uh, accepted bit values that actually can be entered in this window um, so I'm going to switch it back to zero because we actually want the data byte one to be zero and then for the data byte zero we have to type in um, 34 for the stop message so we're going to hit OK and this is all we need to do for our stop message now in the frame list up here you can see um, there's a couple of parameters um, there's the message name frame ID channel data length message type RTR, which is the remote bit, um, which we won't need. Repetition in milliseconds. Um, this is if you want the program to actually repeatedly send this message with a certain frequency of, um, for instance, 10 milliseconds. But we don't want that. We only want the message to be sent once. Now, there's uh, different ways of uh, sending the message. Um, you can... Um, Either click the send message button, which should highlight uh, like so, um, or you can um, use a key from your keyboard. So um, you can uh, set the check mark here, and now if I would hit the A key on my keyboard, this message would be sent. And we're going to use this procedure for this demonstration video. Now the next thing we want to do is to add our positive overcurrent threshold message and as you can see I already added another command message in our frame list up here and I already pre-selected the right command message under our signal details down below and um, also here to um, type our parameters in we can make use of um, those fields here so um, we can simply click here and type in 1100 amps for our physical value of our or of our overcurrent threshold and um, as you can see the um, actual value in hexadecimal populates here on, on the other side um, the, ma the matrix up here is filled out and the numbers populate in the data byte view so um, that's an easy way not to get confused um, where to put um, those numbers in the data byte view up here now when we scroll down a little bit we find the overcurrent positive reset thresholds down here and um, we can do the same thing here um, we will just type in 900 amps for the reset threshold um, under physical value hit enter and you can see under data by three and four um, the corresponding hexadecimal value 0384 populates now um, the last thing we need to do is to type in data by zero which again is um, the first two dig digits in our under our signal name um, and uh, this message is complete now we will just assign a key, put the check mark, select the B key on our keyboard, and this message is fully configured. Now we will be able to send our messages by simply clicking the assigned keyboard letters. Um, I will do so by starting and hitting the A key. And um, as you can see, the um, stop message was sent and the IBTS module confirms with the corresponding response message. Now at this point I want to mention that as the IBTS module has been in stop mode, there haven't been any result messages coming in. But um, the um, standard configuration of IBTS is run mode. So um, if your IBTS is still in default settings, 
you will have to send a stop message first to perform this configuration. The next thing we will do is to hit the B key on our keyboard. And by doing so, you can see the corresponding command message to set our positive overcurrent threshold has been sent and the module responds with the corresponding response message confirming the settings.